Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to do my very best to tell you all about my ride experience with this bike. This is the 2022 version of the City Robin from Ufree Bikes. Now this is an electric commuter style e-bike with 14 amp hour battery pack, a rear hub motor that peaks at 850 watts, comes with fenders, a rear rack, and a Suntour suspension seat post included. So if all that sounds interesting to you, then you're going to want to hang out because I'm about to go through this bike front to back, top to bottom, show you everything up close and tell you everything I learned while riding it. Now, U-Free Bikes is an American company based out of Houston, Texas. And right now, the City Robin is the only bike in their lineup. The last few years, they've been focused on continuous improvement, making small tweaks and changes to this bike based on customer feedback to help make this the best version of itself that it can be. Now, before we start going through this bike, I do want to let you know that it is here courtesy of U-Free. I did not purchase the bike. They sent me this so I could ride test and put my experience out here on YouTube for all of you to see and maybe even help you to decide if the City Robin is what you're looking for in your next e-bike. So I think we're ready to get started. All right, everyone, here's the 2022 version of the City Robin. And right now this bike retails for just under $2,000. Comes in three colors. This is the emerald green, but it also comes in rebel blue and midnight black. Now when the City Robin arrives at your house, it is mostly assembled, but there are a few things you have to do. You gotta put on the handlebars, put on the front wheel, the front fender, and spin on the pedals. And after that, you're pretty much done. Should take about maybe 30 minutes or so to get this bike set up. It was packaged very well. A lot of foam on this bike. I think they had foam over about every piece of it. And it really didn't sustain any damage during shipping. All right, so let's start taking a look at this bike up close. I know it's hard to get a feel for these just looking at the pictures online. So we'll give you some close-up views of everything. Wheel and tire package, 27.5 by 2.1 is the tire size. And they've got a little bit of tread on them. This is a commuter style e-bike. The, you know, the pressures here, it says minimum 40 PSI, maximum 65. So it ends up being a really firm tire. And you know, that's a commuter bike. It's meant to be fast rolling. There is a little bit of grip on here. I would say that's probably enough grip to do the amount of off-roading that you would probably do with this style of bike. So if you need to get into some slippery grass, you'll probably be okay with these tires. And if we take a look on the other side, you'll see that you do have a quick release on the front wheel. And we've got 180 millimeter Tektro hydraulic brakes, fantastic brakes. Didn't have any problems with these. They were smooth, they were quiet, and great stopping power. Very happy with the brakes. The City Robin does have a front suspension fork to help you soak up some of the bumps and has adjustment knobs here on the top for preload and lockout adjustments. The bike also comes standard with fenders, both front and back. They're metal fenders and they wrap pretty far around the tire should help prevent a lot of splash if you're riding in the rain you get a headlight that's mounted right here on the top of the fork and it's wired directly into the bike the bike also has a tail light however it's just a tail light it's not a brake light it only has the tail light function i really wish they would add the brake light function to that that would be fantastic but let's head back up to the front of the bike and you'll see on the front stem they do have their u-free logo but they also have mounting points here for a front basket and they sell on their website a front basket and also a rear basket that clicks off and on to this rear rack. And I think the rear basket has some sort of quick release function built into it. If we head up here to the front again, you can see the wiring. So this is a great job on the wire management. E-bikes have a lot of wires and they did a really good job here of keeping these all tied together nice and neat, about as neat as you can get. Uh, I, I've never seen anybody wrap the entire wire. It's usually only tied at certain points, but they wrap the whole entire thing. So. That's about as clean of a look as you're going to get on an e-bike. I like that. Now, if we take a look at the handlebars, first off, they are 28 inches wide, so nice and wide. And they've got this swept back design, so your hands kind of come back towards you. It makes for a really comfortable riding position. I like to be more upright when I ride and have easy access to the handlebars, and this bike definitely gave me that feeling. Now, for your grips, you've got these leather-wrapped grips with the palm rest. They feel good in your hand. The Tektro brake levers feel real good. And for your shifter, you've got this micro shift here. And this takes you down gears, this takes you up gears. It's all done with your thumb. And it, I mean, it worked really well. I had no problem with that at all. Uh, it doesn't really tell you exactly what gear you're in. It has seven and one listed, but if you're anywhere in between first and seventh gear, you just kind of have to estimate, I guess, what gear you're in, but <laughs> really not a big deal. I didn't have any issue using the shifting mechanism at all. And it does come with this cool little bell, which is actually surprisingly loud. If you come over to this side, this is your control panel. So pedal assist up and down, your mode key to take you through the menus. And it has a left-hand thumb throttle on this bike. But let's turn everything on so you can see what the screen looks like. All right, so it gives you everything you need, of course. Battery power and 
the speed, pedal assist, and odometer. You can see I've got about 48 miles on it right now. So rode it for a little bit to get a good feel for what this bike is like. The bike has five levels of pedal assist. And if you toggle through the menu here, it gives you things like your ride time and the trip meter and odometer. And the trip meter actually resets itself to zero every time the bike shuts off. So I kind of wish that would hold the trip mileage and that I could reset that manually myself. So maybe something they could add in the future. But let's drop down here and talk about the battery pack, which is inside the frame. It's integrated into the frame, which I'm a big fan of. I really like that look. I think it makes for a much cleaner look on the bike. I'm a big fan of this design for the City Robin. The battery is integrated in the frame. The controller's hiding in there as well. You don't see a whole lot of wires. I mean, everything's tied nice and neat. It's a pretty sleek design. I like it a lot. It's a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery pack and slides out the front of the bike. I can put a video up of me taking the battery out. You just put the key in, turn this little knob up here to release it and the battery drops right out the front. I did do a range test on this bike to see how far I could get it to go. And if you've seen any of my range tests in the past, you know I do them throttle only. I don't pedal at all because I want to see what the minimum number is. You know, they, the websites always give you a very high maximum number that if you're in like pedal assist one and you know, pedaling a lot, you can get whatever it is, 60 miles, I think they say. So I do them just throttle only, no pedaling and try to burn through the batteries as fast as I can. I was able to get this bike to go 27 miles under its own power, me not helping it at all. So that was, I thought, pretty impressive for a 14 amp hour battery pack. Now it's getting pretty late in the day and the sun is going down. So I'm not really doing this paint job justice. It's a really deep, dark, emerald green and the only way you get it to pop and to really see that green is in the direct sunlight so we're not getting that effect here but it is a really nice paint job on there and these logos they're not stickers you know that is baked on into the paint it's under the clear coat so that looks really nice and the welds are ground smooth right here and right here so it's a really sharp looking frame with a really nice paint job on it now I'm guessing the controller is probably hiding inside here underneath the battery and I believe it's an 18 amp controller. Now if we go up to the seat, it's a Velo plush seat. It's pretty wide and flat. What makes it so comfortable, you not only have the springs in the back, but you also have this Suntour suspension seat post, which was a little bit odd for me to get used to actually. I've never used one of these and the way it moves is a little bit different than all the other suspension posts I've used. Normally, you know, they just kind of go up and down like a pogo stick. And this one actually kind of goes back at an angle. So at first it didn't feel like the seat was st stable underneath me, but eventually I got used, used to it and really liked it because it absorbs everything. This soaks up all the bumps. I mean, you can drop down off a six inch curb and not even take your butt off the seat. It just, it eats up all the bumps. It makes for a really comfortable ride. And it is adjustable too, so you can dial it up and have it stiffer or softer to match whatever ride quality you're looking for. Now this suspension post does make the ride quality on this bike amazing, but there is one drawback to it, and that is that it adds a lot to the seat height. So I'll put the minimum and maximum seat heights on the screen, but I believe the minimum seat height on this is about 35 inches, which is really quite high for shorter riders. My wife is five foot three and has short legs, and with this suspension seat post in there, she would really struggle to get on and ride this bike. She is not a confident short rider. So we would have to remove that seat post and just put a regular seat on and then the height would be appropriate for her. Now, although the seat height is pretty tall, the step through height is pretty low. It's about 17 inches or so to get your foot through that step through, which makes it a pretty accessible bike. For the front chain ring, you've got double-sided aluminum chain ring, 42 tooth. The pedals are Welgo pedals, and they're different than any other one I've seen, actually. Most e-bikes use the same Welgo pedals on like every bike. These are different. They have rubber around the outside edges, which is actually really grippy. I like these a lot better. If we slide back here to the rear derailleur, it's a micro shift. It's a 14, 28 tooth. I never really ran out of pedal on this bike. Always good feeling in the pedals. The rear rack is actually welded to the frame on this 2022 version, and it is extremely sturdy. And I believe they can say it can hold up to 100 pounds. And if we drop down to the rear hub motor, it's a Bafang motor. I believe it's a 500 watt continuous with an 850 watt peak. And that leads us into talking about the performance of the City Robin. So I went out and did the same three tests I always do with all the e-bikes. And that is I run the bike up to top speed using just the throttle. You know, how fast will the bike go just pushing the throttle? This bike ran up to, I think it was right around 26 miles an hour. 
And then if you add in pedaling, I think I was able to get the bike to go about 28 miles per hour. As long as you're on level ground, this bike has ample power. It's actually quite quick. Where you feel it bogged down is on the hill climb. You know, I took this bike out to my hill climb test area and you know, I have everything marked out on the roads and I time them going up the hill to see how they compare to each other and which bike's actually the quickest. This was one of the slower bikes, but it does have one of the smaller motors. So I guess that makes sense, but it didn't have any problem making the hill. It made it up the hill just fine. It just wasn't as fast as the others. And as long as you're gonna pedal and assist the bike going up steep hills, you'll be perfectly fine. I had no issue climbing any hill with this bike. If you're gonna try to climb a steep hill, throttle only and not help this thing at all, of course it's gonna struggle, most bikes are. So, you know, I didn't have any issues with the power on this bike, I thought it was adequate, but I guess it is something to consider if you live in an extremely hilly area and you're looking for a ton of power out of your bike. All right, if you are considering buying the City Robin, what do you need to know about this bike? Well, the first thing I'm gonna point you to is the seat height. 35 inch minimum seat height on this bike due to that suspension seat post. Now that's gonna be a problem for some shorter riders. If you're five foot three, five foot four, you're probably not gonna be able to get your feet flat on the ground when you're sitting on the seat. It'd be an easy problem to fix though. I mean, you just take out that suspension seat post, put in a regular seat post, and it brings the seat height down a full three inches. So of course you wouldn't have the benefit of the suspension post, but you could just buy a spring loaded seat and you'd probably be all right. All right, the next thing I'll bring up is the weight. We haven't even talked about the weight of this bike yet. On the website, they list it at 55 pounds. According to my scale, it clocked in at 61 pounds, but it is one of the lightest bikes I've been on. The fat tire bikes, the four-inch fat tire bikes, they're very popular right now. They typically weigh about 72, 73 pounds. I've even had one as heavy as 85 pounds. So, you know, right around the 60 mark on this bike, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to lift or load this bike onto a bike rack. The next thing I'll bring up is hill climb power. People ask me about that all the time. So this is not the most powerful bike I've ever been on. It's a 500 watt motor that peaks at 850. So I really didn't have any issue with the hills where I live. They're not crazy steep. So this thing made it up all the hills, no problem. If I came to something really steep, I would just downshift a couple gears and give it some pedal help. And it does what an e-bike is supposed to do, right? It gives you enough assistance to help you get up the hill without having to stand up and pedal or be totally out of breath or have your legs on fire. So um, it doesn't have a ton of down low torquey hill climb power, but like I said, it didn't really have any issue climbing anything I needed it to climb. All right, another thing to point out is that this bike has a left-hand thumb throttle and not a right-hand twist throttle. I know that people are very divided on that, so just be aware, left-hand thumb throttle on this one. I can also let you know that the ride experience on this bike is, I would say, smooth and quiet. So you don't really hear the rear motor. It's very smooth and doesn't make a lot of noise. The brakes were smooth and quiet. The tires were smooth and quiet. They don't roar down the road like the fat tires do. So with how quiet this thing is going down the road, it's a very pleasant ride. And the fact that the battery and the controller and everything is integrated into the frame and you don't really see that stuff, I'd be willing to guess that most of the people saw me riding on the Greenway probably didn't even know that I was riding an e-bike. So it's kind of, uh, I guess, sleek and hidden in that sense. And it is a very pleasant ride going down the road. Now, the last thing I'll bring up is also with regard to the power delivery on this bike. So it's a very gentle, smooth power delivery. When you ask for throttle or you start pedaling, it doesn't kick in and take off like crazy. There's a lot of bikes that do that. This one does not. It's a very smooth, gradual takeoff. And you know, when I have people come over to my house to ride e-bikes, if they're never been on one before, they're a newer rider, there's some bikes I steer them away from because of that power delivery. And I would much rather put them on a bike like this where it's not really gonna throw them off balance and it's gonna be a nice, you know, gentle takeoff and I know that they're gonna have a good experience. So I'm always appreciative when the e-bikes have a more, I guess, refined power delivery like that and the City Robin's got that. All right, everyone, that is the City Robin from Ufree Bikes. And what do you think? Did they hit the mark with this bike? Let me know and let them know in the comments what you think. Special thanks to the folks at Ufree for giving me the chance to get out on this bike and share my experience on YouTube. And I will, of course, link this bike in the description below so you can go read all of the detailed specs and see the purchase options. I'll link Ufree's website as well. And I hope that you found this video helpful today. If there was something I missed, put it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it. And if you liked what you saw, enjoyed it, consider hitting subscribe. And I think that's all for today. So thank you so much for watching. job wow <laughs> <laughs> we're putting that in it's too cute <laughs>